I'm 30 years old. I uh, started doing music when I was 14, 14 years old. A couple of years ago, I heard some really interesting statement in French hip hop, talking about people who share the same experience as I am, as Congolese living in Europe without a lot of money, without a lot of education, trying to steal and doing some bad things, and I can relate to that music. So I started to be really interested by hip hop. Some guys in, in, in Belgium and um, starting this band, we, we worked together for like 10 years. Because when I was growing up, I hate Congolese music. For me, it was like the worst music ever because it was just five or six years ago because I heard some really soulful stuff. And I would like to play just you one song. And that's basically my, my story with music. We start with hip hop, actually. We, we just start to do like American rappers and uh, we just go into their background and like you have all these Kanye West and all these people who sample some Otis Redding. And uh, I was doing the same and listen to just soul and funk and jazz. And the moment you know, I get a link with Congolese music is when I heard this soul and this jazz influence in the 70s Congolese music. And which for me is like the, the best moment of history because it's like the best of both worlds. We, they combine something really uh, tribal mm, on the drums and, um, and then they have these strings and horn section that gives something more soulful. And uh, what was also really challenging for me is like the guitar. And um, now I'm in a band with, with a guy called Dizzy Manjiku, he's 65 years old. He played with Franco and Taboule, all these legend. And uh, when we talk about that, he say, yeah, when we were playing with Franco, we were five soloist guitar player playing all together at the same time. I say, you know, for me, growing up, listening to music with guitar was like, you nuts, you're playing white music. That was like, so just to make these two things together, like the fact that you have guitar and Congolese music as the main instrument, and coming from a hip hop background, like the guitar is something related to rock music, and combining was like, this is something that is part of my history. And it's, it sounds like two things opposite, but I, I think they're pretty close to each other. Um, so we got, I'm going to show you a video called Le Jour d'Après. So Le Jour d'Après is basically a cover of a song of Grand Calais, uh, Independence Cha Cha. Yes. What I like about this song is that I met a lot of people who were into the, in Russell, you know, in 59. Uh, for this big event, mm -hmm. so called. And I think the Belgian government really tried to trick them. Uh, so far, what they told me is like to basically bring some Congolese musician for doing the moment they were doing all the meetings and stuff. They bring some alcohol and then bring some beautiful blonde girls just to distract everyone, and then they can trick the whole thing behind them. And one of these elements was write this song and they put on such, I mean, that's the, my lecture maybe is not correct, but I like this story. I mean, I like to believe this story. I think it's pretty genius. And to bring this group uh, singing something that if you hear that today, that will be completely insane. Like saying, in a song saying like, I love, um, you know, Obama is great, and I think Sarah Palin is fantastic. And the uh, people, you will say, this is nobody can do a song like this. But basically, that's this song is talking about is saying that all these Congolese politicians, whatever <coughs> they believe or not, they're all great, which is something I don't believe. But this is for me the epitome of something that lasts till today. Um, that, it, that the Congolese music is based on, um, how do you say, louange, praising. 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 praising people for money, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I have just to, to give you my favorite example of this. 
because we're talking about the election, actually. Basically, the idea of the video was um, playing with the time, and um, it's like, you, you have that, I guess, here also, you have this Ye Ye Bar, I don't know you call it, that people is still listen to the, the music from the 50s, you have that too? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so it's the same in, in Congo, and everywhere they call it Le Bar Belle Epoque, and people listen to all this classic, and I, I thought it was cool to to bring some European stuff and mixing the whole thing. It's not about the suburb, because a lot of people tell it's, it's all about the suburb, which is something I really hate, this suburb thing, because I cannot, you cannot support somebody who's paying 5,000 euro for a Yamamoto jacket and he cannot pay his rent or buying food for his kid. It's just stupid and people, want to see African people dressing in pink and red just because it look cool, but it's just stupid. Um, but what is true is that this whole movement is based on something about elegance and uh, about something like, for example, UK is a perfect example of a country like this, that there is some ritual about elegance, the way you cut your shirts, the way you wear, put your, your clothes, the socks, this is something different than being supper, which is something that's just basically ridiculous because it doesn't make sense. But people, I mean, in Europe, a lot of people want to see that as something cool about African culture, but it's absolutely not cool, just dumb. And um, if we look at it historically, we, we came from this fascination, and you know better than me, it's just it's something that came because a lot of Congolese people wanted to look like the Belgian king that they called the beautiful one. And uh, so they tried to have a haircut like him, a dress up like him, and also to separate themselves from the rest of the Congolese population. And um, I thought it was something interesting to play with that on the song as well. And, um, and also one of the statements of the song is more about some political issues, I would say, is saying that Congo has extremely young democracy, and it's good that we keep that in mind, and we keep like country like, um, let's say India, that just had independence in the 40s, and to keep those country as example, um, and that's going to help us to grow and. We, we need to, to keep in mind, for example, like, just for example, in Belgium, like 30 years ago, women could not vote. So if you look this gap, I think we make a big step for the democracy. I know, we, we all know what's going wrong, but we also have to keep that in mind that it's, it's a long process. And uh, for example, what happened now in, with the Greek government, with the debt, it's, it's, for me, in my opinion, even if the situation is different, it's exactly the same that happened to a lot of African countries 30 years ago, because they had to cut a lot, and um, I think that's a, that's a nightmare, and uh, that's gonna put the Greek government and the, the Greek population in a, in, a, in a hole for the next 30 or 40 years, exactly like it put Congo in a hole, because the first thing that they cut, it's education, it's medication, it's culture, and they just cut it. Simple, just because we have debt. And that's, that's a reason, I hope that people are gonna understand what happened, European people. Merci. 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 Merci.